Good morning. My name is Lama Jigme Gyatso. And this video is what I hope will be in the first of a series of videos that I'm going to entitle The Tantric Sex God Approach to Nutrition and Fitness. Already I'm wading knee deep into controversy, huh? So here's the deal. As a young boy, I was touched very deeply by George Lucas's description of Holy Mantis Hero in Star Wars Episode Four. That really struck me, and so I spent many years exploring every spiritual system I could, I had access to. Oh gosh, I explored uh, Judaism, Christ various forms of Christianity, various forms of Judaism. Um, I flirted with Islam. I explored various forms of um, New Age thought, Old Age thought, uh, Hinduism, uh, Taoism, Sikhism, Jainism. Where you just flirted with Sikhism and Jainism. Um, I just flirted with, what's it called? Um, the Wiccan Way. Um, I really found a, a strong connection with Buddhism. I explored, I had the very good fortune to receive teachings from every sect of um, Buddhism. The three major sects of Theravadan, Mahayana, and Tantrayana, also known as Vajrayana, as well as the various subsects. And, um, but as a child I could also relate to good old Captain Kirk, Captain Kirk's libido on Star Trek. So it wouldn't surprise you that one of the things I studied in my great search was sexual tantra. I studied sexual tantra from uh, the American hippie point of view, from the Hindu uh, point of view, from the Taoist point of view, and from the Buddhist point of view. It probably won't surprise you to learn that we live in a world full of uh, fundamentalists. And there's fundamentalists not only in, sp in every spiritual sect, but in, in any endeavor. A fundamentalist is motivated chiefly by fear and also by, by pride. Consequently, they have great rigidity, which gives birth to great uh, intolerance and aggression. We find this not only in every spiritual sect, but in every endeavor. We find uh, rigid minions of orthodoxy in science, in chemistry, in biology, in physics, in uh, uh, particle physics, in sociology, in psychology, in psychiatry, in medicine, in fitness, in nutrition. In every endeavor, you're going to have two groups of people. Assuming they're both intelligent, you have the uh, fearful, rigid, aggressive minions of orthodoxy. And then you have the liberals whose fear is dwarfed by their curiosity, whose propensity for rigidity is um, completely enshadowed by their flexibility and their thirst for evolution and growth, and for want of a better term, intellectual wanderlust. And you will find that also in the world of sexuality, no less tantric sexuality. It should come as little surprise that in uh, the modern practice of tantric Buddhism, the number of monks who practice tantric sex is in the radical, radical minority. And those who do, the majority of them won't admit it publicly. They would rather lie than admit it publicly, which is, of course, a great tragedy. One of the many things that sets me apart, makes me a controversial teacher, is, um, in fact, I don't keep secrets. I'm an open book. If, um, 
my students want to know about anything in my life and it serves the Dharma, then I share it. So, one of the great saints of Tibetan Buddhism over the last two or three hundred years was a fellow named Dzam Putul Rinpoche. He was famous. Let me close that door real quick. Okay, I'm back. He was famous for only really talking about the Dharma, and so the things he shared from his own personal life, only he only shared things from his personal life when it served the Dharma. So here is the deal. I have had the opportunity to meet with participants in every arena of sexuality. Men and women, gay and straight, bi and swinger, uh, every flavor of tantra you can shake a stick at, um, those who are into mono mon monogamy, those who are into polyamory, and that's pretty much a tongue twister. So I've had a chance to, to rub elbows and speak and listen to and observe everyone. And one of the things I found is this. Everyone, well not everyone, but a significant proportion of the population wants to be sexy, wants to be fabulous, wants to age well, wants to be disease free, wants to look good naked. Most people don't. Some, most people have been um, sold a false bill of goods. They've been told, hey, you have to starve yourself. You have to eat food that doesn't taste good. You have to uh, exercise for countless hours every day. And when faced with those overwhelming uh, untruths, a lot of people say, skip it, I'll just uh, figure out ways to be happy with mediocrity. And they do. And they don't look good naked, and they have problems with their body that are fixable, problems with their organs, problems with their joints, they age badly, they have weak immune systems, and they don't look good naked. Um, if you are at all captivated by the title, Tantric Sex God Approach to Nutrition and Fitness, most likely... You want to look good naked. So, in this series of videos that I intend to uh, publish once a week, every week, um, I'm intending to do this every Sunday, is ways to live our lives that create the longevity, the health, the strength, the functional fitness, the beauty that we desire without taking over our lives. You know, what if it was possible to get the body you want working out less than 15 minutes a day without ever leaving your home or your apartment or your backyard or your apartment complex, depending on, you know, the season and the temperature? How cool would that be? How cool would it be if you could have delicious, filling, flavorful meals, you know, and um, be slender and healthy and fabulous. So today's first tip is going to sound, well, let me see how many minutes have elapsed. Okay, we're still doing good. Here's, today, here's the first tip. Now, this whole thing fits under the category of three, uh, this whole outline. It has three main points, eat, play, and why. We're going to start with eat because that's the easiest. Here's what I found. Here's what a lot of other people have found. By the way, I've been enthusiastically involved with uh, fitness and nutrition my entire life. Um, basically, it's, I'm a, it's a wonder I'm still alive. I have enough birth trauma brain damage to kill a small horse. 
<laughs> my genetically, I come from really high-strung, disease-prone people. Um, I've been cheating death my entire life. One of the reasons for that is most likely my enthusiasm for nutrition and fitness that, a nutri uh, uh, that's been driven by pragmatism. I might come across a theory I like, but if it doesn't work, I move on to the next theory. I always test theories out in the crucible of my own body. One of the really nice things about being so sickly and subject to so much weakness and so much pain and such a weak immune system is that things affect me rapidly. Things either harm me rapidly or they benefit me rapidly. So I want to share um, the fruits of my endeavor with you so you won't have to work quite as hard as I have to reinvent the wheel. Now here's the myth. You have to exercise to lose weight. And here's the truth. No. If you eat the right diet, you'll spontaneously shed excess fat and you'll spontaneously increase, experience much more energy. Once you are lighter and stronger and have more energy, all of a sudden you'll have both the means and the desire to work out. That doesn't, it sounds, that sounds, stance. you like that's a new word, that stands in sharp contrast to the, 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 uh, the bill of goods you were sold on Saturday morning infomercials or late night infomercials saying that if you eat these vitamins and work out for an hour a day using this set of 32 DVDs, you'll have a beautiful body. No. What'll happen is you'll probably get a stress injury and get burned out even more. So let's start with the simplest thing to fix. Here it is. What is the beverage that you and I and every mammal, no less every carbon-based life form on this beautiful planet, was designed to consume? Here's a hint. It's not, ca it's not tea, it's not coffee, it's not a sports drink, and it's not a soda. The beverage we were designed to thrive on is water. So, you know, there are all different types of water systems. I'm a simple fellow. I go to the local water machine, get a, a gallon for a quarter, and I can and, and uh, several times a week. Some people say, well, if I can't get the finest water, I won't drink water. Listen, even the worst, nastiest water is still better than a sports drink or a soda or coffee or tea. There's lots of people lots of vested interest to make sure you buy those things so to prove it to yourself spend the next three months spend the next one month taking water as your only beverage and notice if your 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 eyes become clearer your skin becomes clearer your hair becomes better guzzle all the water you want with the proviso listen to your body. If you're full, stop. Otherwise, you'll get a bellyache. <laughs> and that's just lame. A bellyache, nine times out of the ten, is 100% avoidable. So, I drink between, typically between 12 and 16 cups of water a day. This is a swing top. Uh, beer bottle I got on the internet because, you know, I, I'm kind of a hippie, I'm a nature boy, and I like glass better than stainless steel or glass better than plastic. Um, and I actually, you know, keep a log in my daily calendar so I know exactly how much water I'm consuming. This is a pint, it's two cups. I think my record is consuming, you know, 22 cups in one day, but that's more the exception than the rule. So, long story short, here's your first action step. Make, from this moment forth, make water your only beverage. Do it for the next 30 to 90 days. If after 90 days you've put on weight by drinking water, if after 90 days your skin's gotten worse, your hair's gotten worse, your eyes have gotten all nasty looking, 
ah, then I'm full of shit, go find another guy to help you out. But, if your hair improves, your eyes improve, your skin improves, your health improves, your schwa de vive improves, then you just might be on to something. I'll see ya. Oh yeah, um, so, in future videos, I'll, I'll explain, you know, simple, easy exercises and things that might require um, downloads. And so I'll set you up for free downloads, and I plan to create um, a couple, of a couple of tumble Tumblr pages. I already have two Pinterest uh, boards. One's called uh, Get the Body of a Tantric Sex God, and then or the other thing was called, uh, yeah, The Body of a Tantric Sex God, or something like that. And the other one is called Fifty Shades of Tantra. Um, just look up Lama Jigme Gyatso on Pinterest. You'll be, I'm tough to miss. Really, I'm tough to miss. Wherever I go, larger than life. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed this. If this is your first exposure to yours truly, I have a whole series of ongoing meditation videos that assume you know nothing, assume that you can't even spell the word meditation, and can take you all the way to the 10th Bumi full enlightenment, and along the way help you to pacify your sufferings and increase the good things in your life. So you're welcome to look me up on YouTube, look me up on Facebook, I'm all over the place. So, I thank you for your time and your kind attention. May you and yours be healthy and happy. Oh, money upon me whom. See you next week. Bye-bye now.